Hey, Joydeep. Yeah, I can hear you. Hi, Mohammed. So, friends, we are going to have a mock interview session today with Mohammed. Mohammed Ansari has more than 20 years of experience in the software industry, and it was a pleasure having you, Mohammed. So, I would pass over to you for a quick introduction, and uh, probably we can start. Uh, thank you, Joydeep, for having me uh, for a mock interview. Uh, yeah, I am basically into enterprise software product development for more than 20 years now. And uh, for past three and a half to four years, I'm basically building uh, products on AWS, uh, primarily for building platform services. I'm excited to join this mock interview uh, to help others who would like to learn how to attend the, the system design interview. At the same time, I'm also practicing uh, how to uh, conduct myself and learn some of the tips and tricks uh, for the system design and a problem that I have not solved before. Yeah, so yeah, thank you, Daddy. So great, uh, Mohammed. It would be a learning experience for all of us. It would be definitely some learning for me as well from the interview. It's uh, always good to have a discussion with technical people. So with that, Mohammed, what we'll do is we'll have a proper setup, just like a, a normal interview. Uh, I have already shared a Google Docs with you, and uh, there I'll be sharing the question. So please feel free to use any tool of your choice. You can share your desktop even and use MS Paint as well, whatever you are comfortable with, in order to come up with the solution. And uh, also, it would be great to know your thought process if you can uh, talk uh, talk through the solution as you do it. It would be a, a great uh, then. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, I can. I would actually use uh, Google Doc that you have uh, shared, and then I would actually use the mock system design uh, thing. Perfect. Uh, yeah, that's this. Yeah. So I, I believe there is no need to share this thing. Right? It would be. Uh, yeah. at your side as well. Exactly. So uh, I hope you can see as I type over here. So I'll just. Yeah, I can see. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you have to give me request uh, access, uh, Joyvi. I cannot type here unless you give me the. Okay. Okay. Access. So let me sort that out. Let me know once you can um, able to make changes. Yeah, request I did have actually got. Um, just uh, type in currently sign it as yeah i think that i think it should work. yes i can see yeah. your I, yeah, I can see yeah okay yeah. so um, what we'll do is i will have the question on the board for you and then you can have the okay. follow up questions that you might have and uh, then yes. we can jump into the design yes yeah sure so here is something that i want um, i want a online ludo game so it's a very mm -hmm. popular and common game in India. So it's a four player okay. game or a two player game. So here for the sake mm -hmm. of simplicity, let's say that it's a four player game. And uh, I need a feature okay. like uh, I can uh, be able, I should be able to play with my friends if I have okay. them or I can play with the strangers. So other three guys who are also okay. willing to play can join. And also okay. I need something like a leaderboard to know who's at the top. Okay. Okay. So this you is my requirement at a very high thing. level. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I believe your portal would uh, have uh, uh, would allow a user. Let me just uh, type down some additional uh, requirements to understand uh, what is involved in this. Um, so I so I believe you would like to have users signing into the system and then playing the game, or you would. Uh, anybody can just go into a system and then uh, log in and find the options of playing games. Is that what it is, or it could be? Uh, um, let, let's say, for the sake of simplicity, that anybody can uh, come and play. So I am uh, more interested okay. on uh, seeing how you host the game, how you use the infrastructure in okay. order to, uh, uh, let's say, for example, let me give you some hints over here. Like uh, many okay. of the players might be from the different parts of the world, right? There may be okay. uh, mm -hmm. somebody from US who's playing against a friend who is in Europe. The other friend is in yes. Asia. Uh, so how uh -huh. you are going to handle all those things and of course uh, okay. the part that you mentioned the login so when it comes to friend uh -huh. there is a, a login involved okay okay so yeah that is that is correct so i mean they, anybody can come into the uh, play the game but i think there would be a, a service that that would allow 
user uh, to uh, set up an account, right? They should right. be a service. They should allow uh, for, for uh, account management, I believe. So, yeah. and, uh, so this is basically a, play, a game uh, where uh, anybody can come in. So how many users are we expecting to be playing? So, I, so one game would be actually four users. Like you said, but how many games currently can be can be going on at okay. a given point of time? Okay, so I would take an estimate of about say ten million games to be hosted every day, with uh, almost uh, five to seven millions of uh, daily active users. Okay, okay, and uh, five to uh, so there are ten million games, and then uh, five to uh, maybe I take at a high level uh, seven million. Uh, active uh, users, yeah. uh, right, on the, on the particular system. Right. And then, um, so I believe, um, uh, so I mean, I believe this is this is a system we, where we are targeting, uh, I mean, do we need to record the status of all the games or it is just a game which is been draw and then we don't want to have a historical part of the, the game which happened. Uh, excellent question. A... Actually, yeah, I, I was expecting this question and glad to hear that you asked. So I would say that you can uh, st store for the last 10 games maybe because nobody is going to go ahead and check the previous game what they have done. So let's say we can have okay. 10 to 15 games or one week's record stored with us. Okay, so last 10 games. And since we are saying that uh, uh, I think overall, I think that we are seeing 7 billion active users, but I think what are the total number of users we are seeing? Maybe, um, maybe how many? Uh, 15 or 20 million? Yeah, you uh, can take a number users. like that. Let's say 20 million. Okay. 20 million users. When you are talking about 20 million users, and there are 10 games, which means that uh, need to record um, basically uh, 20 million into 10 games. This is basically the amount of data that we need to uh, record, right. Uh, right, which is 200 uh, million. Now, when we're talking about recording the historical details of the data, uh, so I, I believe that, you know, we need to, we need to have a game uh, UID sort of, right, which can identify a game right. and, um, and the so game UID would be needed plus the users, you know, who has actually played uh, the user's IDs, right? I mean, it should it should have a record of the game and the user IDs. Uh, so in all, I think if we just talk about it uh, for the back of the middle of calculations, right? The data that we are uh, have to store in the database. Uh, so game UID may be as just as you 10 characters. Right. Uh, and then basically user IDs may be again 10 characters. So the 20, 20 characters, which is 20 bytes uh, into 200 million, right? So this is basically the amount of data um, that we need to store, right? So which is, which actually becomes into 220 into 200 uh, into one to three into 10, um, one to three divided by thousand becomes kilobytes divided by uh, thousand becomes megabytes uh divided by thousand becomes gb right yeah uh, so this is basically if it, if it, I think it becomes actually four gb of data uh that we need to store uh in the in the database just for the, the historical record right uh in, in the database and for the user account that we are talking about um so since we are also taking taking the information that we need to store the uh data of the users and since we are talking about uh you know uh, uh, 20 million users and i believe each user should have around um, roughly uh, 1 kb of users data right i mean maybe mail references i believe region right so i think will that be fair information right so or we can do uh, for the sake of simplicity what we can assume is that this data is held by some other service we are just uh, hosting the game Okay, okay, okay. So this data is basically, you know, we can we can say that this is basically uh, somewhere from the, the identity is actually coming. Yeah, from, from some of uh, the upstream or downstream yeah, services yeah, we can assume. Yeah, so, yeah, so, yeah okay, fine. Uh, so four GB of data in the database, I think uh, that is that is not a big not not a big enough uh, data. Yeah. Uh, so it should be okay uh, to have uh, a database. Uh, uh, now I think where is the bottleneck if you have to build a system? 
Uh, so we are saying that 7 million active users are there in the system. Uh, right. So I believe every second somebody would, uh, you know, uh, play the, you know, have a uh, change, right. right? I mean, when somebody right. is throwing the dice, yeah, so it is basically, I mean, the request rate uh, is basically 7 million um, request rate. I can assume that uh, 7 million, um, so 7 into one two three into one so these are the basic the request in 24 hours right so you can divide it 24 by uh, 4000 right 24 one hour is uh, roughly for 4000 seconds right to 4000 this would actually these are the request uh, rate um, in uh, per second right uh, so this is basically seven divided by four four thousand uh, so if i could quickly calculate uh, to my calculator uh, so I think that would. Uh, so can you just reiterate on the request rate? So what is seven? Yeah. So seven million active users are playing the Ludo. Right. Uh, right. And they are they are in a in a given day, right? Yeah. Uh, so I am I am trying to compute how how many. Uh, what is the know, RPS? Uh, yeah. What is the request per second? Mm -hmm. uh, so there are seven million users. Um, uh, so I would just basically. Uh, or you can come from the game side that we have 10 million games. So each game, let's say, we'll have some 200 moves. Okay. So two hundred each game is basically uh, 200 moves per second. Okay. Uh, per, per, yeah, so, yeah, something like that. Okay. So two, okay, I think maybe just from the game side, I'll assume that. Um, uh, you're saying 200 moves per second, right? No, no, 200, 200 moves, moves per, second, per right? game, and we have 10 million games every day. Okay, okay, 200 moves per game. Yeah. And then basically, so how much does it actually come to the 200 moves per game? Uh, so I can, uh, and we have 10 million games. Yes, right? yes. Uh, so 200 into 10 million uh, into 1, 2, 3. Basically, divided by 24, divided by uh, 36, uh, 3600. So, this is actually coming to 20, roughly 25,000 uh, requests per second. Right. Uh, requests per second, yeah. This is basically 25,000 um, requests uh, per second. So, I think this is basically uh, the high level information that we have to hmm. design the system. Right. right. Uh, no, I so I think this is this is basically 2500 request and then I can just underlying it of what could basically and so this is uh, and then four GB of data that we are uh, storing and now if you talk about the availability of the system how much of availability are we expecting um, so do we want it to be a very high available system or it may actually have some downtime as well. I mean, quickly users will talk about five nines or three nines. I, I, th I think three nines should be good enough. Three, three nine, oh, yeah, okay, three nine per second, uh, yeah, three nine. Yeah, I think uh, that is fair enough. And then I think, uh, and then basically we have to choose, uh, I mean, it is going to be a real time system, right? So maybe a person sitting in the US is playing with a person sitting in uh, in India, right? Uh, right. So do you do we want it to be a real real the data to be updated in the real time? I believe that is that's how it should be, right? I mean, do we have any requirement on the latency? Um, I mean, it should be. Um, I mean, is there is there any uh, latency requirement? I think one. Yeah, definitely, second. we should have a latency. Uh, so I will say, yeah, yeah something where, like um, uh, two to three milliseconds should be good enough. Okay, two, three, three second uh, latency. Uh, but I, yeah, see, and uh, then I think since we have to store the data, right? Mm -hmm. um, uh, after it has the game has been persisted, right? I think we, I mean, do we need to, I mean, do we need, do we have a requirement that in between the users can pause? Uh, I mean, do we need to store the state of the game? And then user can re resume later, or you want to, you know, either it is uh, it is end or uh, yeah, that's an interesting be. question. So basically, what might happen yeah. is that some user might drop off also in between, right? So we cannot hamper uh -huh. the experience of the other three. Um, 
Yes, that is that is perfectly fine. But let's say poor people are playing the game and they said, you know, it's a lifetime now. Let's break off, and after a certain interval of time, we'll come back and then again resume that game. Uh, is uh, that a possibility? Uh, not to... not in the middle yeah. of the game. We should not allow that. Okay, not in, okay. So finish the turn and, and yeah, exactly. Yes, exactly. Yes, we have to just uh, finish. Yeah, so let me see. I think uh, it's the only requirement where the information is getting persisted in the database. Uh, is about the once the end of the game has reached, right? So four GB is basically where we actually right. update the state of the game, and that I think can be um, you know do yeah. I mean, so there are two options: we can have an eventual consistency or the immediate consistency of the data. I think um, that is basically. I mean, we can have. I mean, there is. I don't see any problem not to make it immediate consistent uh, as soon as the uh, game has basically. Uh, completed, uh, then the database would, you know, would get updated, and then with the historical report of the system. Right? Yes, yes. Uh, I think this is this is the information that that I have. Uh, so let me just work out the database uh, design, um, um, and then basically we we'll talk about the services of what we would be needing, and then we'll basically sketch out uh, how these services are going to interact. Uh, Perfect. So yeah. now this is basically we are talking about you know uh, historical record of the um, <clears throat> data. Um, uh, so every users uh, you know can have. We are saying that it is it is only going to have uh, last uh, in in data, uh, right? Not and not not more than that. Right. Uh, so I can have I can have a table. Um, it's a table and for different things. We would like to have in the database. Um, uh, so basically, we we'll just say uh, user ID um, mm -hmm. of the users. Uh, then basically, we we'll say game ID. Um, these are basically we can we can talk about uh, maybe uh, we can have stats, uh, characters, um, and then uh, game ID would be actually store uh, the data type. Uh, then we'll we'll have the uh, I mean, when the game has happened, uh, right? right? So we can actually have date and time stamp uh, of when the game has actually happened. Hmm. Uh, we can talk about the, the status of the game. Who has hmm. actually, uh, you know, uh, I mean, for this person, whether he has actually won or lost, uh, won or uh, so it's basically kind of uh, uh, win or loss, uh, hmm. and then basically it would be a boolean. And then I believe it's that I mean we need to have information of uh, who we who, who he has actually placed right. Uh, mm -hmm. so opponents uh, UIDs is basically we can we can store. Um, so this is basically one option. Now here we can you know we can store it as an array um, or yeah I think array. Yeah, should be, should be, uh, okay, uh, I have one question over here that you have taken yes. UID as one field and opponent ID as uh, the other fields. So uh, uh, yeah. uh, there are four players. So one ID will be on the UID. The other three IDs uh, will be on the opponent's UID. Yes, yes, yes. That that is that is one option. Uh, mm -hmm. Let me just think what other options could be there, right? Um, the other option could be I can have uh, the uh, game IDs. Yeah, because this uh, will be a bottleneck for the other players, the other IDs that you are storing. If they wanted to see their historic games, then there is no yeah, way to yeah. find it. Yeah, they. I mean, so let's say uh, the uh, IDs are basically one, two, three, and four. Right? Yeah. Uh, and so it would be basically one, and here it would be two, three, four. Um, so two, three, four. And yeah. here, let's say, I mean, for the same thing, it would be actually here. One, one. Okay, 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 okay. Three. Like, like so that, this, you this want. Is, Yeah, okay. this is, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. since I, you have the game ID in place, so you don't need the opponent yeah. ID. So, you can just get by the game ID, the all the UIDs. Yeah. You yeah, can but eliminate. How would I, yeah, yeah, we can eliminate this. Um, I think, yeah, we can uh, eliminate this. Uh, Okay. Uh, so opponent IDs, I think the player ID, player UIDs, we can actually uh, four players uh, UID can be stored in four four different fields because if you store in an array, then there will be yeah. a problem that uh, if I have to check yeah. for uh, four yeah. historical game, I have to go through all yeah. the fields. I cannot index it. Yes, yes, yes. So I can have four different four different columns. Um, yes. Uh, 
So uh, we know that actually... it cannot exceed four players. So we can have four yes. fields easily. Yes, yes, yes. yes. So player UID one, player UID two, player UID one, two, three, four. It's basically what we would. Uh, but this this kind this kind of table is also good but you, you will have a problem while showing the historic game so you have to check in all the four columns so if i am player number uh -huh. five say and you uh -huh. want to find my historic games then yeah. you have to check uh, for the id5 in uid1 uid2 uid3 uid4 you have to search in four columns ah uh, that is that's true that's the reason i wanted to keep uh player uid separately so it is it is duplicated uh, so that i can actually search with uh, that player and the opponents if it is if it is required yeah but right? if that, i actually have a yes in that case also you'll have that problem because you have to search in an array and in an array you cannot have it indexed right so uh, yeah that is correct so, so, so i mean let's say the use case is if uh, i want to search um, uh, because i would be only interested in in my games when i have played and who are the so i would never be indexing on and i would never be searching on an array uh, i would only be like to see that who what are the games that i have actually played so uh, query like um, select where i am the user id right so if the query is like um, select uh, game id hmm. or star from this games table hmm. right where my where uh, basically the uh, the player UID the first column hmm. um, player UID is my ID right the player where the player uh, that is basically one option. Um, player, How about you? Uh, we you normalize it. Just take game ID and player ID and put it into a different table. It will be much easier. So you ah. retrieve all the game IDs for that player, and then you pull out uh -huh. all the, all the game details. Okay, okay. Yeah, we can we can do that as well. See what you're suggesting is. I would have another table. Yeah, uh, normalization, simple. Yeah. So here it would be. Uh, Just game ID, player ID. Game ID and uh, player ID. Yes. Yeah. And so basically, yeah, I think that is perfect. Yeah. So, and we can normalize it. And the player ID, we can actually search the game ID and then we go to the game ID yes. and it says the other opponents as well. Exactly. Yeah, I think that. Yes. And you can get rid of uh, all the player IDs from the first table. We don't need any player IDs. We just need the game information. What time it started, how many moves yeah. were given, or things like that. Yes. Okay. okay. This is, uh, this is fine. Mm -hmm. uh, and win or loss also, it will be a player ID. So you can just put the player ID instead there with a, instead of a Boolean. Yeah. Okay. Winner is a player at the end, yes. It will be yeah, player ID. Yeah, no. Yes. Yeah, player ID. Yes. Looks good now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I think this is the information that we are storing in the uh, in the database. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, yeah, because this is a small enough information, so we could have uh, just one uh, because this is a structured uh, data, right? So we would actually think of so we have two choices. I mean, we have a couple of choices uh, from choosing well, how do we store this information, uh, right? So one of uh, so choice of database uh, because it, this is a kind of structure, uh, so we can have a relational uh, database uh, at uh, at a high level. That's what we think. Uh, and the other option is basically you know most most SQL uh, TB. Um, uh, now, since this is this is basically a structured data, uh, my preference would be to go directly with this. Um, uh, and it's in the information is quite small, uh, mm -hmm. so we would actually choose uh, relational DB. Uh, so then we can choose Postgres or uh, MySQL, uh, uh, and then basically uh, that would actually serve the purpose of storing storing this and then we could have a service to get the i mean one service to kind of get the uh get the data so mm -hmm. uh, this this actually yeah uh so now actually we come to the um inform how do we store uh, how do we actually 
uh, lay out the architecture, um, right? So I'm thinking that we can actually have microservices. Uh, so yeah. that we so think before we how... go to the architecture, I have few questions. So uh, the table, huh? uh, I have a few questions. So the table that you have over here, this table is for yeah. the game that has already been played or for the game that are in progress as well. Uh, the game which is already in progress, I am thinking that we we need not actually persist that information until finished. Um, until finished. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, right. But if we have to, you know, if we have to persist that information as the game is actually getting played, mm -hmm. uh, that is also an option. Mm -hmm. uh, then you know we can actually have a column here to say that with what is the status of that. Again, um, so yeah, status is uh, basically the There will be one uh, problem with the latency of two to three milliseconds if we are trying to do a database operation, it yeah. might uh, turn out to be costly. So, let's say for the sake of yes. simplicity, we are not persisting the state of the games yeah. that are in progress. Yeah, we are not persisting. Yeah, hmm. we are, we are, we'll just, yeah, we'll, right now we'll just keep it as a column set in future. If you have to extend it, that hmm. is fine. But right now, this is column hmm. will be pretty much empty. Yeah. So now, so what are the different services that we are talking here? Mm -hmm. um, so um, basically, uh, we can say that we are talking about the game service, all right? Uh, the game service, I think we can, we can only have this, I mean, it's not enough functionality that we're talking here. Uh, so a simple, single uh, service, microservice, uh, game service, which can offer uh, REST APIs, would I think would suffice. Uh, mm -hmm. And then I think we can talk about the different APIs that we're actually going to uh, have uh, you know, uh, to allow users to play play the game. Right. Uh, so let's say one of the API would be um, I believe when the user when when he actually logs in into the uh, system, right? At so at what point of time? I mean, he would actually uh, initiate a game, right? That's what typically he would actually uh, do. Uh, so I mean, I, so there are two options. You can you can have initiate a new game. Uh, so there's basically a the API to initiate a game. Uh, then basically add users um, to the game, right? I mean, if the game or maybe you can, can actually find the game, uh, find uh, available uh, games. And then basically add uh, users uh, to the game. I mean, he can. Uh, mm -hmm. Um, we can choose uh, the his, his friends, or we can have a system, you know, which can automatically, as soon as initiate the game, the system finds, uh, you know, um, the, uh, the, the the players and actually add to the game. So they can, like, this particular service can have both the option. Hmm. Uh, then automatically choosing uh, the auto players, or uh, basically if they're not auto players, then the users can actually add to the game. Uh, and basically, uh, you know. Uh, uh, I think that's a service to get right play just um, play uh, the uh, game right. For example, if if there are for simplicity, let's assume that there are two users. Uh, so I would actually uh, move my uh, you know I would play the dice and uh, I'll move my uh, you know the um, uh, I don't know do what is the term for you know um, the uh, the coins and I think as soon as it's mm -hmm. moved, the system should actually update for the other user wherever he's actually playing and then the other person you know, should actually see that uh, reflection and then basically he would um, uh, he could actually also do the game. So we'll just talk about how the system would be. I think that's an interesting uh, thing that I'm just thinking how would we actually right. position that. Mm -hmm. right? So I would just say uh, make, make moves is basically you know the the API that we'll be hmm. thinking of. And I think once it is done, and then basically the API, you know, to kind of get historical um, uh, data, right? Uh, and then basically once the game actually finishes, we can, you know, either the system can automatically finish the game with a declaration, with, you know, uh, or declaring who is the winner, or the users would have an option to actually finish, finish the game, hmm. right? Do you see any, I mean, does it look right to you? I mean, am I going in the right direction or do you see anything? Uh, 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 this could be one way. Uh, this is one way. You are uh, going on the right path more or less. So there are a few interesting things to consider over here. Uh -huh. 
so one uh-huh. is uh, we have four players and the four players basically how the game goes is when one gives the moves the other three waits right so there yes, is a toggling yes. of this connection right uh, so uh, yes. uh, if you uh, do you have anything in mind how you are going to do this so uh, one way could uh-huh. be if i give you a hint could be a socket right so i have given yeah. a move now it's your turn to move and the other way could yes. be long pulling as well yeah mm-hmm. so yeah. i the thing that is in my mind is basically you know the kind of you some sort of uh pops up uh, you know um, publication subscription yeah. kind of you know, design design yeah. pattern that you can use of apache kafka mm-hmm. i can just think uh, uh, more on that but if i just think allow uh, you know that they there are the four players who are basically sitting and playing the game right mm-hmm. will uh as soon as you know somebody uh, makes a move an event has to be raised uh, and the system you know uh, that is actually uh, pushed on to the topic and there are actually four there are subscribers right which would actually uh, get a notification um, that uh, that it is basically a time for them to actually uh, make a move right and then one of those three would actually uh, you know fill there have to be some sort of i mean other than the game service they have to be some sort of service uh, in between which could you know orchestrate that mm-hmm. uh, thing uh, to say that who's move it is right now mm-hmm. uh, right which can actually uh, listen to an event and then say that okay now if out of this four one has made the move listen to the event and say send an event and say that now it is the move of one of the other other three players okay so there is a problem with the pub sub or a kafka kind of approach that uh, you mentioned that is uh, basically uh-huh. here only one person uh, three person is listening right and we cannot have a topic uh-huh. created for just three person right and they are on the client side moreover and client uh-huh. can be in various ways right it can be a mobile uh-huh. it can be a tv it can be a smartphone mm-hmm. it can be many things right mm-hmm. so uh, uh-huh. uh, basically for each of these three players th- th- that They, that are waiting for their turn to come right so they uh-huh. need to be notified uh, when the first player has given its move the other three needs to be notified so uh, yes. uh, uh, one thing you can explore over here is something called a long pulling so what happens is when when w- player 1 is giving his turn the other three uh-huh. have made a long pull and the long pull means will not terminate or send back the response until player 1 uh-huh. has completed its move so as i receive okay. receive a uh, uh, request from player 1 then i mm-hmm. terminate the rest of the three remaining connections okay and also send them the update that okay he has moved this coin or his dice has been thrown with 5 or 4 or whatever number it is and what happens okay. so player 1 terminates to, so it's player 2's turn now right so player 2 mm-hmm. uh, uh, then what happens player 1 player 3 and player 4 goes into the long pull again uh-huh and it terminates when two sends the request uh-huh and as soon as you get the uh, request from two then you uh-huh. put one two and four in the long pull and you give the turn to three uh-huh. so you can uh, do a round robin between them in this fashion or the other way could be you can use a socket so uh, you can create a uh-huh. socket connection and based on the move you can enable them like with the first player the second player the third player or the fourth player okay okay mm-hmm. so yeah long long pulling is one option but i was thinking in the long pulling i mean again it is uh, you know an even even uh, mechanism so we still have to use apache kafka or um, uh, kafka right for for the long pulling as well uh it's a it's a basically a pull mechanism uh so yes. i mean the topics is still would need to be created right i was thinking that we can actually not have those 7 million topics created but we can actually use some sort of uh, sharding mechanism and then basically have uh, topics shared across across the users uh um, Uh, yeah, no, no, no. Uh, my intention was actually to use the game id and make the session sticky so that i don't need a topic all those four okay. players request ends up into a single machine all the time okay because of okay. the stickiness okay. Okay. so in that case i okay. don't need to maintain a topic okay okay 
so then but is still uh, then um, you can persist okay, to so uh, persist in a cache from where you can uh, okay. fetch the game session out and make the move and uh, send them back okay okay means that's one thought. Just, yeah you can just uh, yeah. revisit the thought and uh, you can uh, there, there are definitely alternates to it because there is no not a single yeah. design to any problem there could be multiple yes yes yeah i think that is that is the that is i think sticky session is uh, could be one option um so when so let's i think just do a dry run so let's say there are four players so one first player makes a request which makes you know call the make moves api which would actually take in uh, the game uid and the player player id mm -hmm. uh, so that actually goes on to the server which is having the sticky session for this particular user but the other users, uh, you know, they are also um, connecting it. So now the second, as soon as basically, and they have already made a long pull uh, to that particular um, uh, to the server. And then once that actually uh, gets, uh, yes. I mean, the second chance comes, you would actually uh, get get that get the yes. data. And the stickiness uh, would be is, on the game ID and not on the user ID. Yeah, yeah, it would. Yeah, stickiness would be on the game ID and. Yeah, that is that is perfect. I think that. that or that we can be, have uh, the clusters. Uh, or if we are persisting this into a cache, then we don't need the stickiness. Also, if it is going to the appropriate region, I can take out the game session from the cache directly. Yeah, yeah. Only thing is, we have to store some information that in the round robin the users yes, are actually yes. playing. Exactly. Uh, right. Yeah. So so one two. So I think that maybe this that information. We have to store. So as soon as this game actually goes uh, and then um, goes to, we can store. We can make use of the Redis yes, uh, cache. That's what I was uh, and, to. Yeah, uh, and then basically once he makes the move, then basically the other person would, uh, you know, uh, go and uh, get the information from from that. Uh, yeah, I think that is that is that is possible. Yeah. So we can completely uh, remove this event uh, or the pop sub system from between, and yeah. we can just uh, yeah. in cache on we that can, one. We can make, yeah, we can make use of the uh, Redis cache. So yeah. So and then I think for historical uh, historical data, I think we will take a directly call to the uh, to the database. Um, but once we actually uh, go to the database, right? Um, we have to, I think once it is finishes, we have to make sure that, you know, we actually remove one of the earlier entries because if the number of entries are more than um, uh, 10, then we have to, you know, we, we have to make use of the, uh, remove the first of the, the oldest entry from the database and put to the new one. Right. So, uh, so with this I, with this data in hand, how you are uh, planning to come up with the leaderboard? Uh, so uh, we have ten million players that's playing, right? And uh, we need uh -huh. a leaderboard like who's on top. So let's say when you get, win a game, so you get mm -hmm. let's say hundred points per game, uh, uh -huh. winning per game. So uh, uh -huh. now some players are winning, so the leaderboard keeps on changing. So I always need to keep a track of how, how many, uh, like my top 10 players, let's say. Uh -huh. So how do we come up with this leaderboard from this uh, table only? So are, are okay. we going to okay. query this or, uh, because the ranks are yeah. going to change very fast, right? Yeah, yeah, that is that is true. Uh, okay, so I did consider the leaderboard uh, requirement here. Uh, so let's what we are saying here. Let me quickly write down what is the uh, criteria for the uh, leaderboard. Uh, so, so I think top ten players who have. Uh, so we need to have some information of the um, the the person who has basically having the win or loss. Now this this table is only giving me the information that this game ID and who is the winner or the user, uh, right? Uh, yes. But if I have to um, add uh, those users, I can um, together to kind to compute the. I think the query may actually become um, very difficult, right? Going to going to the database, right? Exactly. Um, and moreover, we are not. Uh, we yeah. are just storing the last ten games information over here. Yes, yes, yes. So this would basically that, which means now I have to have 
some other information. Uh, as soon as the winner aggregates are added, I need to have a separate um, table which would actually you know come keep keep it ready. Um, yes. So if I can plot table here, uh, then I need to have. <coughs> We have, to, we have to have our user IDs and then we actually have um, total points. Mm -hmm. And as soon as the winner actually keeps up getting added, I would uh, I would actually compute the total points for that particular user. Mm -hmm. uh, and this can be uh, indexed uh, and then uh, so that you have to write a book, uh, you have to search. So let's say I, use, I have user ID one, two, three, who have basically have you know hundred points, and then basically uh, some other four, five, six, and then basically have got five hundred points. So I should actually be able to uh, get these top ten sorted in the um, uh, descending order, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and then get the get the particular uh, user IDs, and then would actually add add the data, right? That is that is one option. Hmm. Uh, and then yeah as it look open to you or um, yeah uh, but uh, uh, for the uh, yeah. for this you you can use you can explore uh, some hints i would give you probably you can explore it later also we uh -huh. can use a heap in order to do this because there will be 10 million players right i i if i'm uh -huh. going and even if it is indexed and i am going to uh, get the top 10 results also it's going to be a very costly operation yeah. every time i hit yeah, it yeah yeah so we can pre-worm yeah, yeah. the cache we have the data in the cache and we can have a heap in order to get this data out it will be much faster yeah, in order yeah. to uh, get it from a min heap yeah yeah right right so this is basically the persistent side of the thing yes actually, persistence is perfect uh, as you are showing we uh, need to yeah. persist it. but yeah but on the cache side i think we can we can actually yeah we can definitely use our heap uh, to store the information and then we can actually uh, reduce reduce the call to the uh, uh, database. Exactly. Uh, so you can actually have a heap and then uh, yeah. Exactly. So uh, when is, when uh, a feature like leaderboard or something like that is given, it is very much stressed that uh, the information should be much real time because people will be judging yes. the players based on that, right? Yes, that is yeah, that is that is yeah. So as we see on the IPLs and all, right, it uh, keeps shuffling as you play this yeah. uh, super matches and yeah. all those things are there these yeah. days, yeah. right? Yeah. Right. Right. Uh, also, so uh, I think if yeah. I... Yeah. yeah. No, no. Please no, carry no. on. Please no. carry on. Yeah. No, I was thinking that I can go and uh, put the architecture uh, yeah, yeah, sure. of that. Right. Is... Yes, yes. Sure. I think if I uh, if we start with um, here, is basically the uh, there are clients who would be the different clients who would be actually playing uh, the game, mm -hmm. and then um, I just kind of separate them from here. Uh, so yeah, so there would be you know some sort of um, uh, so we'll have a database which is actually we talk about uh, DB which would uh, store all the information and then we can have um, uh, the different services. I mean, we can have a load balancer here. Uh, so we can actually have a load balancer based on um, round robin, I think. Uh, are you putting anything on the sheet? Because uh, I don't see it reflected yet. Yeah, I have uh, uh, drawn uh, certain things here. Oops. So, I, I don't see it yet. Maybe it will come. Yeah, you can you can continue. I'll just uh, refresh okay. it and see okay. if it appears. Okay. We'll have um, uh, uh, round profit to kind of connect the services. Um, so I just connect here uh, that get going to the ALB and then the different services, how it is um, uh, so we'll have um, uh, how many services we have. Uh, we only have right now only uh, one service which we are actually uh, calling it as a, a game service. And game service is providing uh, the game service is basically could de get deployed in the in the container, right? And which uh, the the actually I cannot see the changes. It says that last rate was made uh, three minutes ago. So is there a connectivity issue at your end or something? Uh, 
should i oh, share okay okay you that? you are actually doing on that uh, sheet okay 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 got it i was checking on the google docs okay okay no i'm it. doing on mock system like okay okay, yeah. okay 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 fine i can see it yeah okay so game system back uh, so yeah game service is basically yeah so there i'm just uh, saying that it's basically would scale up depending upon uh the requirement I mean, five we would actually put up all these scalability rules uh depending upon uh you know how many containers may be actually required to do some back of the calculation also for that how many containers we would need and then basically this game service is basically and then we are we are saying that we'll have uh um redis um, uh, connection um, a cache for the um, uh, redis and we are just uh, in the same diagram here for the dp uh, so i just call it uh, uh, redis and we have the this uh, yes so my uh, i just uh, yeah it's basically cache information which is stored in the redis and then uh, yeah, the database um it's i will just be so here uh yeah so yeah. round company probably you know will do and make a call to uh you know the game service for for these particular uh apis but main proof is basically we are saying that will basically be made on the sticky session which is based on the game id so i would basically not use the round robin here we would actually uh you know have a alb going to a specific uh so service right the micro service i would you know um, i would make uh, use of uh, game game idea the criteria to go to one of the one of the specific specific service mm -hmm. uh, and let me just see what else um, uh, the only thing is since this is a global um uh, uh, you know game uh, so do we need to have those specific app uh, service deployed in that Uh, a specific region exactly that's uh, what i was coming to uh, you need to put them in yeah. a region so you should do that round robin thing that you have mentioned on the uh, alv on the uh, region so firstly it should be a latency based routing so if i am connecting i should not get connected to us rather i should get connected yeah. to uh, apac or asia pacific right and yes, once i yeah. reach there then you can do a round robin there so what uh, okay. since we have a latency number in place we don't want our connection to be uh, going to us or any other location we uh, yeah, we yeah. should use multiple load balancer in such scenarios so the first level yeah. of load balancer should take me to the right region yeah okay. and the second okay. one should take me to uh, do, should do the round robbing in that region uh -huh. okay okay and uh, we can have this uh, now the problem will come uh, with the redis also because you will be doing a huge number of uh, reads and writes so your your uh, redis is uh, read heavy and write heavy it's not uh, that it's uh, only read heavy or write heavy you will be reading and writing so each of the move in the game will uh, will force you to make changes in your redis object that you are storing right because the game state is changing uh -huh. So, so after the game is over, then only I will put the data in the Redis, right? It's not. Uh, it's. Uh, But if okay, you don't yes. store it in the Redis, then you have to make sure that all. Then uh, is that you have to store the game state in the memory itself? Yes, I was thinking that we would uh, change store the game state in memory itself. Hmm. Uh, I make use of the sticky session. That is one option. So I don't have to kind of you know. go to the redis and only once the game has uh, ended mm -hmm. then only would will for com computing the you know the winners point is basically the information that i have stored in the redis yes but uh, with that one pro uh, problem is that if that machine goes down then the game is all the games that been held in that machine will be gone um uh, yes you cannot is, recover that, that. Is, yeah that you cannot recover Uh, and what is 
I think the other option would be, um, yeah, I guess. Um, so in-memory thing yeah. that you mentioned is actually good. So I would rather have both in-memory and I should have a region specific uh, uh, Redis. So uh, my Europe okay. region does not need to share anything with my US region, right? Or the APAC uh -huh. region. Yeah. So I can yeah. make the deployment uh, confined to a region. So my Redis is only for a region so that I have a ample space for scaling. Okay, okay. Yeah, you're getting uh, my point, yeah, right? I so uh, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, my intention is to uh, take you to the right region, and then we have the mm -hmm. complete cluster setup for those region. Now, if we have a single okay. Redis, then the problem is that after certain point we cannot scale. Yeah, that is that is true, that is true. But I was you know not thinking that I would store the information of all the moves, right? Mm -hmm. For example, um, it is basically the state. Right. Hmm. For example, uh, let's say, um, uh, let's say uh, the player one has, and I'm, for simplicity, I'm assuming that there are only, uh, let's say, one point, right? Hmm. And there are two, uh, two players. So as soon as basically the uh, the player one moves its particular uh, point, uh, so I would actually have the state of that point, uh, right? And then I would actually uh, persist only the last last position of that point, right? and not the historical record of that no, no, uh, not right? the historical re record but if you change the last position of let's say one coin has moved right so yeah. you updated that state now you you have to persist that state somewhere right in redis or yes. in memory because we yeah. cannot completely yeah. rely on the client we can do that like we will not store uh -huh. anything let the client have it but in that case there is yeah. a huge chance that people will start misusing the game i can change the object and send it right it will yeah, be a lapse yeah, on the security part. Yeah, yeah. So the other option you are suggesting is basically, I mean, it is it is there in memory. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, what uh, you are saying that if the uh, particular service have down or down, then I have lost the state of that particular game. Yeah, maybe some uh, 200 right, game was hosted in that machine. So all those 200 game is gone. Yeah, yeah that particular. And then we have to store, yeah. You yeah. have to store the state of that game in, in the latest in that in that particular region. Exactly. Uh, so yeah, so one option is basically, you know, even in a given region, uh, right? I mean, let's say uh, this this game is actually uh, you know launched in India, right? And uh, in India we have you know only one region, mm -hmm. uh, right? And we we have I mean still the Redis would you know become a bottleneck. So instead of having one instance of a Redis. Uh, what me what we may actually think was basically sharding based on the game ID and have exactly. particular clusters of Redis. Yes, right? like a distributed so, yeah, caching. So, you're coming to yeah, like yes. a distri distributed absolutely. caching. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, yeah, so we yeah, so we can hash the game UID. So let's say we decide that you know, I mean, there is some I uh, still back up the calculation that would be involved. Uh, so say that I would have hundred Redis connections to be actually uh, sufficient, right? Yeah. So then we would actually hash the game uid and then mod it with number of redis connection and get the redis instance and start writing to that particular exactly. redis redis connect exactly. instance that would actually, yeah uh, yeah that is more of uh, a consistent uh, hashing approach that you will take yeah 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 the consistent hashing thing yeah. yes yes yeah. yes makes sense but again, so, uh, the only focus is that we should have enough deduplication that we can rebuild the game. We should not lose the state. Losing one or two game is fine, but we should not lose a million yeah. games. Yes, yes, that is true. So now the question that comes is what if, I mean, we have the state of stored in Redis and the game and the server have died, right? And if you have to kind of you know, rebuild that service, uh, that means so the player makes a move and then basically this the LB actually is not able to find that particular container, right? It has gone to a new container. Mm -hmm. uh, right now the, the at that point of time that service needs to understand that this is basically you know uh, the Redis instance which would have the information. So which means now my client would have to you know uh, send the game ID. So for example, if it's a new server assigned. Uh, right, so then the client uh, the server finds oh there is no instance of that game in my in my memory. So from that game uh, ID, it should it should be able to find out the latest instance and actually bring bring reset, right, right. 
you, sh- you should be able to determine yeah. the key from the game yeah. id yes that is that is that is right, right. Uh, yeah uh, then what are the bottlenecks i think uh, would be i think you have to talk about you know we will have uh, in in the talk uh, that we would the leaderboard is basically you know dynamically computed yes uh, and is stored in the in the redis mm-hmm. and then if we ever anybody would like to we see the uh, details you have to just go to that redis or mem cache and get that get that particular data exactly um, yeah so i mean the only thing is when the game has finished and, and it may actually happen that there are you know, um, uh, 100 games uh completed at the same time and then we have to go and update um the points of all those users right will there be any concurrency problem of updating uh, the data uh, i i think it should not right? uh, each of them would be because you are not uh, playing two games at the same time so the client has to definitely yeah. have a check on that that one user should not be playing yeah. five games at the same time Yes, yes, yeah, that is that is correct. Yeah. So, yeah, those those logic have to be in the client so that you know it should not actually uh, all these reports are correct. Right, right. right and this uh, leaderboard updation should also happen like uh, uh, first it should update the cache it should be a write through the cache so it updates the cache then it puts the uh, data wherever you wanted to persist you have shared some table for it as well right so yes. we, ca- we can yeah, do that yeah. as well so this will be yeah, warmed yeah. up when a server comes up he gets the data from the cache mm-hmm. that's already being there yes. for the leaderboard yes yeah that is correct yeah so that is the way we can um, have this i think we have pretty much covered all the points and uh, yeah uh, one one thing that uh, you can uh, probably refine it over here is now the now since we have talked about the regions and all right so playing with friends is fine that i send out the invite they join via the link so playing with strangers you can do a interesting thing over here so uh, uh, probably now you have the region right so you will be connected yeah. to a region and we can have queues in that region right so we can just uh-huh. pick four players from the queue and host the game directly Yeah, so yeah. rather okay. than having okay. a API, uh, so that b- API yeah. basically will just take four players from the queue and it will just uh, keep on hosting the games. Ah, uh-huh. yeah, right, right. That is that is good. Yeah, so correct. So we'll have a queue as soon as the people uh, join in. Uh, yeah, yeah, depending upon. So we just have a worker. Be. Just that worker. What yeah. that worker does is it takes out four player. If the queue is greater yeah. than length of four, it take out four player yeah. host the game. Take out four player host the game. Yeah. It keeps doing that. The yeah. worker keeps on doing. Yeah. That. Yes. Yeah. That is that's good. Right. And another uh, thing is that uh, you could. probably that is a client th- side thing i should say so we are uh, talking about a long pool or a socket we should have a time out so uh, the other yeah. three players they should not be wait forever so we should uh, definitely yeah. have a time out of say 30 seconds uh, to give the moves or maybe yeah. one minute something like that so that we know yeah. if a player has not uh, uh, like participating he has left the game or sh- uh, left the pc and went off there sh- there should yeah. be a fallback mechanism yes. the other three yeah. should not get uh, yeah. uh, impacted by the same yes yeah yeah i think overall the way you started it was pr- pretty nice the way you captured it is kind of a great experience to see somebody uh, coming up with such a neat way to capture the requirement in terms of storage and uh, the latency numbers one area that i feel that you could improve is the is the uh, this uh, putting the diagram in place right so you can uh, mm-hmm. uh, uh, like when you get a problem like this you can probably first think that uh, it is a latency oriented thing right we want a low latency yeah. and we are going towards a yeah. region specific solution so you can distribute yeah. the cluster and uh, you can i think mm-hmm. with the given time you can probably come up with a good diagram over here but overall okay. i think okay. it's been uh, pretty nice i would say okay okay thank you so it was pretty good and uh, it was great to get connected with you as well so yeah thanks it was yeah thank you so much same here yeah i think it is interesting example you know i never thought you know designing such a thing 
uh yeah i think uh, yeah i think thanks for all your tips uh, you know to kind of uh, sure. make it successful and happy to be part of this mock interview thank you so have much. a good night thank you i will share the link with you Bye. once we have this yeah. on the uh, on youtube i'll share it with you so, so. thanks once again yes, for yes. your time it was great having you here yeah yeah thank you um, thank you have a great day bye